Today we're going to show you two ways to use patchwork to make beautiful projects from scraps that you already have. This is the first part of our scrap busting series where we show you how to use fabric scraps to make projects that are both beautiful and useful. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any scrap busting videos. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Haley. Patchwork garments are so cute and trendy. Plus, they're such a great way to show off your creativity and utilize some scraps while you're at it. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through two techniques to make your own patchwork projects. Make sure to stay to the end to hear about my favorite patterns for patchwork sewing. So first up, I'm going to show you how to make patchwork yardage. I like this method because it feels really improvisational and really meditative, which I think captures the spirit of mindful making, which is what we are doing today. So what this method entails basically is sewing your scraps together to create continuous yardage so that you have something you can cut an actual project out of. So you can see here, I've gotten started on my little patchwork and how I sew this is, I take my scrap pieces and I lay them on top of each other and I'm kind of treating it almost like a puzzle. I'm letting the fabric speak to me. How do you want to be put together, fabric? And when I'm using this method, I like to make sure that I'm mostly utilize or I'm totally utilizing straight lines because that way you're not getting any weird lumps and bumps in your yardage. You want that to be smooth and continuous. So, I line it up kind of where I want to be. And you don't have to worry too much about grain line with this. You can kind of have some fun and play with the angles of everything. Now that I like where that is at, I'm going to use a straight edge a ruler and a rotary cutter to cut along this line to make sure I'm working with a nice straight line. And if you don't have a rotary cutter, you can definitely use a marking tool and, um, a ruler and then just cut with your scissors. Then once you have a nice clean edge to work with, I'm gonna use my serger to join these two pieces of fabric. Now if you don't have a serger, you can definitely use a domestic sewing machine. I would sew that with a straight stitch at 3 eighths of an inch and then finish with a zigzag. Then once you do that, you'll just give it a nice little press, make sure that seam is nice and crisp, and you'll just continue using this method until you have a piece that's large enough to cut your pattern piece from. Let me give you a few guidelines to kind of help you out as you embark on your patchwork journey. Rule number one is you can use pretty much any size scrap that you have, so it's kind of a non-rule. Um, this is totally up to your personal preference and the look that you are going for. Obviously, larger scraps are going to be less time intensive to piece together. Rule number two is to make sure that you're using woven fabrics. This is going to give you your best result. And rule number three is to make sure that you're sticking in the medium to lightweight category. You're gonna to wanna to choose something that's fairly stable and all of your fabrics should be somewhat similar to one another. You can definitely mix um, fabrics, use linen and cotton and things, but I would avoid things that are too drapey like silk or rayon. Let me show you another example. So this piece has some more curves going on than the previous piece that I was using, and I'm gonna show you how to work around that. So you can see here, I have a little bit more of a curve. This side has a little bit straighter edge, but I'm working with this little cutout here. Usually I'm going to recommend choosing, actually always choose the path of least resistance. I am going to line this up as best as I can. And then I'm gonna flip my fabric over so that I can utilize this line as kind of a guide as I'm cutting. And the fun thing about patchwork is that every step is going to be a little bit different. So you're really going to just like feel it out intuitively and figure it out as you go. And then we sew.
I'm obsessed. So like I said before, we just want to make sure that we have a large enough piece that we can cut out our project. And here I am checking to see where I need to add fabric in order to cut out the front of my Hanzi. And I have enough length going on here, but it does look like I need to add a panel either on that side or this side to get the width that I need. And I like to do this because then I'm not doing more work than I need to do. I'm not making a larger piece than I can use. So just check as you go. And then when you get there, you can cut out your project. This next technique that I'm gonna show you is a more intentional way to do patchwork. It's basically color blocking. So to start, what you are going to wanna do is trace your pattern. If you're planning on doing something that is symmetrical, so that means that it looks like the same on your right side of your body as it does on the left side of your body, you can trace on the half. However, I want to do something that's asymmetrical because I think that's cool and groovy. So if you're like me and you wanna be asymmetrical, you are going to want to trace a mirrored copy of your pattern. Just make sure that you are transferring all of your marks when you are tracing. Okay. So here I just traced my center front and this is just a little grain line reminder because I am going to be transferring my grain line to my other pattern pieces as I go. Once you have everything traced, now is the fun part. You get to experiment with the kinds of shapes that you wanna create with your patchwork. So when using this method, you can have a lot of fun and experiment, but you do wanna be mindful of the landmarks on your pattern. For instance, on the Hanzi that I have here, I wouldn't wanna go straight through the apex of my dart. I could go beyond it with a style line or I could even go through it but I wouldn't go right through that tip because it would just get a little bit weird and bulky and annoying in the sewing process. All you're going to do is you're gonna draw in the lines where you want your seam lines to be. So you can use rulers or curved edges. You go get a big salad bowl and use that, or you could simply just freehand it and then use some curved edges to kind of clean things up as you go. That is what I am going to do. I'm gonna do a little mix and match. I'm gonna add in some straight lines to contrast that curved one. So here is one idea for how you could arrange your patchwork on this particular project. Now there's a couple things that you are going to wanna to do before you start hacking into all of this. The first thing is you wanna transfer all of your grain lines. Do that, I'm just going to use a straight ruler and transfer my grain line to every single one of these pattern pieces. So I have it on this guy and this guy already. I can just kind of continue that line that's already there. Okay, now all of my pattern pieces have grain lines on them. What I wanna do now is when you cut all of this out, you're gonna be like, what am I looking at? So it's nice to number or label these in a way that you understand what you're looking at later. So what I like to do in a situation like this um, is just label them with numbers. So I will label numbers. And then before I cut anything out, I will snap a picture on my phone and that'll be my reference when I'm putting the puzzle back together. So next I'm gonna cut everything out and add seam allowance. You'll wanna keep in mind that the perimeter of the pattern, all of that already has seam allowance that was put there by the pattern maker. So you just need to worry about these interior lines here. And when you're adding your seam allowance, make sure that you are keeping in mind the method in which you're gonna piece all of this together. For instance, I'm gonna be using a serger and I plan on cutting an eighth of an inch off as I serge, so I'm gonna use three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay. 
All right, then you just repeat that step for all of the other edges that need seam allowance. Once you've added all of your seam allowance, you can go ahead and cut out your pattern pieces, making sure to use those grain lines we work so hard to draw in. Once everything's all cut out, you'll assemble your pattern pieces and then you can follow the pattern instructions as usual, just treating them like regular old pattern pieces. Let me share with you some of my favorite seam work patterns for making patchwork projects. So of course I have to shout out Hanzi. Hanzi was what I demonstrated on today. Basically what you're looking for with patchwork is you want to look for patterns that are really simple in design because you want to play designer and add all of the flair to the pattern pieces themselves. Um, it's also just visually, it's totally up to your personal preference, but it's going to give you like an overall cleaner, more high-end look to use something simple and add the patchwork in. If you want to make a dress, the Seamwork Lian would be a lovely choice as a big gathered skirt, which is a great canvas. We also have the Mica dress, which is an oversized caftan style dress. If you wanted to make a patchwork coat, which I would highly recommend, be really cute. We have the Easton quilted coat, which would be so cool. You also do not have to make garments, you can also lean into accessories instead. We have the Jordan device sleeve, which is a device sleeve that you can use for your laptop, tablets, and readers. Um, it would be a great way to use up those scraps as well. And make sure you stay tuned for a future episode of Mindful Making where I'm going to show you a no pattern sewing project you can make using patchwork. So let me know in the comments below what patterns do you think would be a great match for patchwork. I can't wait to see what you all come up with and I will see you next time. Happy sewing. When you join, you get access to our entire catalog of over 200 modern sewing patterns, from quick and easy tops to wear anywhere dresses to tailored blazers and pants. We help you to design and craft your own wardrobe. Membership also gets you access to Design Your Wardrobe, our popular course that walks you through a process for laying out a seasonal wardrobe that you can sew. Plus, membership includes our library of dozens of sew along classes. And best of all, access to our private sewing community, including tens of thousands of members, where you can post projects, ask questions, and even find sewing friends near you. I hang out there all the time along with Haley and the rest of the team here at Seamwork, and I'd love for you to join me. YouTube subscribers get half off a Seamwork membership, making it an incredibly good deal. To sign up, just click the button on screen or the link in the description below to claim your offer. I hope you loved this video, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.